Frontier stated just before Christmas that update 11 would bring the much anticipated fleet carrier interiors to Elite Dangerous Odyssey early in 2022 and so in this video we're taking a look at everything we know about the fleet carrier interior features and importantly what we still don't know. To make sure you don't miss any of our videos hit like and subscribe, remember to click the little bell icon and select all notifications and to help directly support this channel you can also join our Patreon via the link in the video description. Much the same as the exterior functionality of the multi billion credit player owned movable stations fleet carrier interiors will have customizable modular slots into which can be added various on foot functions that mirror the services available to on foot commanders in stations and starports. Those services are Pioneer Supplies, The Bar, Vista Genomics and The Shipyard. Pioneer Supplies, everyone's favourite galaxy wide on foot weaponry and equipment monopoly will operate in a slightly different way to the starport version of the shop. Instead of the vendors having unlimited supplies of whatever they have to hand with a chance of limited stocks of pre upgraded suits and weapons the carrier version will guarantee to be able to supply you with absolutely everything weapons and suits wise. Frontier haven't stated specifically yet whether there will be a chance of purchasing pre upgraded kit in the mobile arms dealer but if we had to guess we honestly think it unlikely. And unlike ships and ship module suppliers players will not need to keep the Pioneer Supplies franchise outlet on their fleet carrier stocked up as the stock will not deplete which is a nice bonus. As with existing carrier services the fleet carrier owner will be able to choose whether to sell the Pioneer Supplies goods at a markup price. If they do the markup will go into the coffers of the fleet carrier as pure profit. Frontier however hasn't been specific yet on whether goods can be sold at a discount. When it comes to any supplies that are considered illegal in some systems ...we're thinking specifically here of the e-breach consumable because the universe seems just fine with the sale of military grade weapons and explosives but don't you dare take my datas then carrier owners will be able to toggle the sale of those items on and off as they see fit. Whether there are consequences for leaving it toggled on in a non naughty data privacy loving system is a further unknown currently. Onto the Vista Genomics carrier franchise then. As best we can determine currently the Vista G or VGen on a carrier ...pick the one that works best for you ...operates in a largely similar way to the station and starport version of the biology obsessed money funnel. For the convenience of potentially cashing in your slime finds whilst in the deep black there will be a markdown from the petri dish worshipping outlets when they pay for your time and fungal samples however. What is currently unknown and of some concern to the player base is whether the opening of the new carrier interior modules will require a visit to a carrier admin system as is the case with the installation of carrier exterior services currently. Whilst a visit to an admin system is a trivial matter for a carrier based in the bubble or colonia regions ...for any carriers based in the deep black at the edges of the galaxy for example ...of which there are many ...then returning some potentially 25,000 light years or more ...opening a Vista Genomics outlet and then returning the 25,000 light years or more to resume their previous station is no small undertaking and for many will doubtless prove a showstopper. This is I'm sure a concern for the administrators of the deep space support array galaxy wide network of fleet carriers. That particular network maintains around 100 permanently anchored fleet carriers quite literally in every corner of the galaxy and the thought of some or all of those carriers being recalled and then redeployed just as one example is logistical nightmare fuel. Whilst an argument can be made for existing carrier services needing the facilities of an admin system to have new functions installed ...we're hopeful that what amounts to the opening of a franchise store will require significantly less support architecture and Frontier will see sense and let these new features be added remotely. Next then the shipyard functionality for on foot interiors. 
Unlike the modules we've spoken about so far the shipyard is essentially an on foot interface for any already existing fleet carrier exterior shipyard functionality rather than a franchise outlet and therefore it won't need to be installed. It'll just open up in response to any shipyard functionality the carrier has. As it isn't a franchise for a third party company it will not feature a grinning uniformed NPC company representative but will instead be a space with dedicated terminals for accessing the shipyard functions of the carrier. Onto the bar then and what could be one of the most radical additions to the Odyssey experience to arise from the carrier interior extension. When last Frontier spoke about the bar and bartender planned for carrier interiors they explained that their intention was for it to operate in a similar fashion to the existing carriers commodity market. The key difference however was that the carrier owner will be able to set supply and demand quotas not for commodities but for on foot materials. The specific example they gave on a livestream before Christmas featuring a conversation with senior game designer Derin Halil detailed the carrier owner setting up a buy order for opinion polls to be used in the unlocking of the engineer Kit Fowler. It's not known currently if the bartender will be able to set supply and demand for all on foot materials or just selected ones but in either scenario the ramifications are clear. Whilst not all mats featured in Odyssey are hard to come by some are extremely difficult to get hold of and if the gathering of some of the tougher materials could instead be managed via the abundant fleet carriers in the game I can't imagine any player currently wading through suit and weapon engineering having too much of a problem with that. That's all the services that we currently know about. Whether there are any more services or not is unknown at the moment. For example Frontline Solutions or Apex Interstellar could doubtless find a place in a fleet carrier but as of right now Frontier aren't commenting further. To move between all of these exterior modules you'll obviously be walking the corridors of the fleet carrier and whilst doing so you will see your carrier based NPC crew members moving about. We also know that carrier interiors can be themed in different schemes that will affect the ambient lighting and colour. We think it likely that these themes will be available as an ARCS store item but that is unconfirmed at the moment. One particularly cute feature shown so far is the ships con and owners ready room area which is situated above and overlooking the seating area and large bay windows of the jump room. More on that in a moment. This exclusive area is only accessible via an elevator and can only be used by the carrier owner and those individuals in the owners team. Whether the space comes with any extra functionality is currently unknown but what we've seen so far it does at the very least drip with coolness in abundance featuring as it does a Star Trek style captains chair and 3 seats for the rest of the team. I mentioned the jump room. Since carriers first entered the game in June of 2020 players have asked for the ability to watch the jump sequence from inside the carrier itself. Currently when using the jump capability of the colossal mobile credit sinks commanders are restricted to the view of the interior of the closed hangar bay as their ship is transported up to 500 light years away in a matter of seconds. With the launch of carrier interiors commanders will finally be able to view the carriers traversal through hyperspace from the comfort of the spacious jump room that affords views out over the carriers landing pads. Carriers feature interior seating which can be used by commanders via an interaction menu and when a carrier jumps any onboard commanders who aren't already seated will be forced into a seat for the duration of the carrier jump sequence but Frontier have assured that the jump itself will finally be viewable from the interior. The appearance of door charge and override sockets in the interior footage shown so far has led to some speculation that we may see missions or gameplay that utilises the carrier interiors. Ideas featuring scenarios such as repelling boarders or indeed being one of the boarding parties yourself and raiding a fleet carrier have been bandied about. 
Whilst undoubtedly cool, no hints of these features have come from Frontier at all and the door sockets are a standard feature on just about every door in Odyssey so in the initial implementation at least we think it probably unlikely that we'll see anything as dynamic as that kind of gameplay. Update 10 was deployed into the game last week and whilst Frontiers comms are quiet to say the least right now we've no reason to believe that carrier interiors are not still scheduled to arrive in update 11 fairly soon. What feature are you most looking forward to and what features would you like to see still added to the interior? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video consider subscribing to the channel and maybe take a look at one of our other videos linked on screen right now.